Hello and welcome to episode 63 of Let's Talk Tactics. I'm your host, Zach Bro. Hey, I'm Dan Wood. Uh, and we got a little breaking news. I'd say, well, it's not breaking. It happened, uh, you know, all day, and <laughs> not just now. Uh, although the game did just go down for maintenance as we start this podcast, but uh, there was a bit of a little debacle today. Uh, Daniel, would you I like think... to tell us about it a little bit? <laughs> oh, man. Where do I start? You, you had the math on it, and you actually were able to do something with it. Um, and then yeah. I think discussing what we think is going to happen would be interesting. Okay. So for starters, I'm not going to be like, I fucking told you so. Get on your selection quest shit. But <laughs> for those of us who are on our shit, we were able to take advantage of this huge fiasco, um, or, or so it seems, uh, of a situation where um, basically we're all familiar by now of the selection quests for each of the elements and how like every month you can like recycle or not recycle, but like you have the opportunity to grab like up to like a, a hundred like prisms and like uh, I think it's like 50 fragments or something like that. Um, as well as like a rainbow frag and so like i'm always like yeah you really need to get on this this is a good way of getting your resources every month um because it's for like pretty much uh every well it's every element that there's a selection quest for um and i think we're just missing like are we missing a selection quest mm -hmm. element yes i can't remember which one though i'm pretty i'm pretty sure we are like lightning no that's no lightning's the yeah that's do we have mona garvel's uh sister right vilna was, was ice the last one I was thinking it was ice, but like, what about what's her face? I, I'm mixing up Ra Rachel Rachel's with uh, the recent recent um, uh, ice like assassin, and I can't remember if she was the selection class unit for ice. No, I sure. I think every element does have it now. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, oh, or no, Earth is Moraga. Duh. <laughs> oh, Rafal. Rafal is her name. Yeah, Rafal. Um, but anyways, um, they uh, uh by some divine mandate of our precious intern kun <laughs> where we're, we're used intern kun um f neglected to include the the cap for those materials um and so for anyone watching now or for like months from now like you know feeling nostalgic about this one time where intern kun really got really fucked up and got fired afterwards um those of us that were able to make it to like selection quest selection quests like 11 12 or 13 you can, you don't even have to go to 13 like you could just do all the missions on 11 and 12 and like farm it from there in my opinion like as long as you got past mm -hmm. 11 and 12 13 is the easiest which is weird <laughs> um but just because of the the shenanigans in 11 and 12 like once you see them you'll know what i'm talking about like you need very specific strategies to get past them whereas the 13th one is just like you know just straight up um you know mash the buttons at the the bad guys or whatever um but anyways regardless as long as you could like skip ticket the mission whichever one of those you want to do uh you pretty much have like an unlimited amount um of resources gained past the cap that we're normally used to so um <laughs> and for for me like i had 42 like energy skips uh at like rank 163 or whatever uh so Oh, God, what were the numbers, dude? I, I sent them to you in a PM. Uh, I can, yeah, I can pull them up if you want. It was like, I, it was like over forty thousand light prisms. So here's like the 20. the actual gain. Uh, I'll do the possible energy left you that you sent. Uh, oh, okay. So you had four thousand three hundred twenty energy left, uh, and it said potential gains left times six. I, yeah, I because know. of the um, that's that's just uh, my calculations from like uh these oh, are from what had already happened yeah, yeah how okay. many pots i had left versus how many i'd used and so it was just like easy for easy to just multiply by six but whatever well theoretically uh and then your actual num actual numbers are very close but uh it's forty three thousand additional light awakening prisms from what you had already gained uh i think it was like 50k total two th or twenty thousand five hundred light fragments of thought 756 rainbow fragments of thought and 876 additional azure imbued fragments of thought and then apparently also like 60,000 jp so this is like yeah. i obviously those numbers are astronomical for what we're used to and like right. you brought a point like you could just convert right like you could just sit on all these light materials and you, if you i need a new ice unit dope convert it over that's i think it's a two to one conversion for prisms and uh fragments or is it five to one 
I think it's two to one, but there are cases where it's five to one. So I'm getting confused now. In and either I case, I literally <laughs> just did it though. So like that you would oh, have twenty one thousand or whatever you want if you don't need light, which is, <laughs> I mean, that's what forty two units of each element or something. Like that. It's it's absurd. Like if you do the math, yeah. it, it's really absurd. Uh, with these, actually, that's just for EX job. It's more than that, or it's less units, but regardless it's way more than you need uh i i believe i could just max awaken every unit in my account that i haven't yet uh and more <laughs> just be ready for the future more than so that. yeah it's pretty yes yes uh it's pretty insane to see those numbers um and uh I, i'm like i'd be willing to bet pretty much anything that that's what the maintenance is for right now um we obviously don't have a confirmation yet. Now, here's the the fun part. What do you think they're going to do? Because I believe that their records are not as impeccable as we might hope they are. And they will not be able to individually remove uh, things from people's accounts or target things. Nor do I think that they'd have the ability to necessarily take out specific things. Good so, grammar. If they, uh, what's that? I said good grammar. Uh, I don't know what I said, but I feel like I said something incorrectly. Said, nor, and that was correct. Instead, I was like, oh, oh. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Neither nor, either or, yeah. Uh, anyway, I don't think they could do a server rollback, uh, without drastic consequences from the community. And not, not that they, you know, maybe, maybe the cost benefit analysis comes out to where it's worth it, but. A partial rollback, so something like resetting materials to a certain point could be a route, but I don't think they're going to have like the books to be able to actually track that. And if they do a rollback on pulls, can you imagine the blowback on that with anybody who's just grinded today trying to pull a unit? You go on their nine step, you got on the first step, now you got to pull again, and you're not going to have the same luck, quote unquote, unless you have, and then if you do, oh, maybe seeds are coming back in town. But it, there's just there's not a lot of winning situations, I think, for what they could do here. And I'm really curious to see what it is. Now, I also can't imagine they just ban everybody that did it because GG to, like, a ton of your player base. Yeah, because it's not against the terms of service, like, posting a hack on, like, YouTube or something, you know? Right, it's, it's not a hack. It's just in the game. Yeah. And you're like, oh, this is weird. Skip. <laughs> like, oh, maybe they're being kind. Like, who... May, Maybe someone literally thought it was just a new feature of the game. You're like, oh, cool. I right. earned my way to this 13th mission. And like, oh, now I can. My knees are met forever. <laughs> but... Like, where's the line? Where do you draw the line? <laughs> right. Between, so, like, exploit uh, and. What, what do you plan? think they're going to do? Honestly, I wish I actually, could. Actually, actually, sorry, sorry. What do you think they could do? And what do you think they're going to do? Like, so, two separate questions. I mean, I'd like to say that this is an egregious enough mistake that they would just do the roll back this entire server and then fuck the fuck the consequences of of polls or whatever um i know like bringing the summer units back is kind of a money grab anyways um so and like uh, the like they're they're trying to you know get you to spend vizier so you need to get more vizier um and i don't i don't know how much their their like uh economists are planning on if they even have one economist <laughs> yeah. i don't know how much I don't i'm know sure how much they have economists to some I, extent. I, I don't know how much they're planning on making but i think um whatever gains that they might get versus like the fallout from letting people keep this much resources gained um i would do a server rollback um, well i mean without, who's without ever going to buy the like 100 select tickets again right like Ooh, well, yeah, 100 fragments of thought for I don't whatever pay viz it's like i don't even think it's a, it's even a comparable situation <laughs> of like instant gratification versus like long term you know like responsible gratification i've never even used that combination of words but uh <laughs> yeah so but i don't expect that that they're going to do that so um i think i'm expecting that once the maintenance is done the it's going to be like fixed like fixed but um i think the damage has been done and it's just the the worst part about it like i i'm, I'm coming at it with this tone because i i deplore the whole fucking situation um but like 
I also regret the fact that I need to keep up in the arms race if it, you know, if we're going to call it an arms race, but yeah. like the worst part about it is just widening the gap artificially, like even more between like spenders and non spenders. And that's not what the game needed. So yeah, it's just, it's just really unfortunate. Um, I kind of expect someone to like lose their job or <laughs> something like, um, you know, go on a farm for penance and or like break your back for, <laughs> for a month. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, I feel like they could have known about the issue way sooner too than right now. Like, well, we we start recording at eight thirty Eastern on a Wednesday, and well, eight forty, but whatever. Like eight thirty two, yeah, I think the servers yeah. went down, something like that. Something like um, that. I was actually on my thing, checking out the banners and looking at some stuff to to talk about, or to get some notes, but. Then the server just boom. I'm like, oh, there goes the light selection quest. <laughs> um, yeah, man, I don't, I don't know. It's gonna be weird. Honestly, I think. Or just give everybody 50k to, or make set all set materials equal to 50k, and then just there we go. We never have to f like worry about that. Those again. I think um, what took them so long is a testament to not only the gravity of the situation, but just like. Like I can only imagine their action was like, "How the fuck do we fix this, dude?" And you like, shut the game I, down, and then you decide. Like, I feel like my like sailor tongue is coming out in terms of just like you know, fuck, fuck, fuck. But like, uh, yeah, it's just like the, my filter right now is just gone. Um, so, uh, yeah, like I feel like half the day they, they were just trying to figure out um, how to like mitigate the damage caused um, by. Uh, being able to like collect so many resources so i mean i uh, on one end like i feel for them and i'm like you know like wow it really sucks that this happened good luck fixing it and on the other hand it's like i don't know maybe they could have dealt with it better in some way but um again like gumi they're they're not really transparent with things and that we're probably never going to really know what happens or how it gets fixed which is unfortunate because the game is you know, very fun, but we have such low confidence in the company to do the right thing or to be able to do things quote unquote properly, uh, very often. And, and yeah, I, no, I feel bad like, shitting on it all the time, but like at the same time, it's like, come on, like put a little more effort. Me, like where I'm coming from as a perspective of, uh, it's not just about Gumi, but like, you know, like there's square Enix as well. So I just, I hate how little transparency there is. Like you can never tell like if it's square Enix or if it's Gumi, that's like making things fucked right, up right. more than it should be. Um, I have to assume that it's something like combined between the two, uh, just like how Activision basically destroyed uh, Blizzard's legacy. Um, <laughs> if you're familiar with, you know, old school Blizzard versus new school Blizzard. Yeah, it's not Activision though. I don't want. I don't want to get into all that drama. But at the yeah, same time, anyways, the Blizzard culture was Activision happening for years before the accident anyway all right uh, oh, okay well anyway, yeah that's, <laughs> that's a whole other podcast <laughs> yeah. uh blizzard scandals yay um all right so yeah verdict uh no idea we'll see maybe after the podcast is over I'll, I'll, or maybe i'll check at the end of the podcast see if it's back up or not but i imagine this is not going to be a quick fix uh because you know they're gonna have to do some coding or something some recoding i imagine guild battles will be reset um but if there, but if there was a third window of any manual content, we wouldn't get another day. Just so you know. But anyway, uh, moving on to the <laughs> releases for uh, this week, we have some EX to talk about, and then we also have our first uh, global taste of Mastery Ability Twos, which is going to kind of open up a whole new can of worms for the meta. And whether or not I think these first four units are going to be, you know, having the impact that. Others might, I don't know, but I I have a couple examples of other ones that I, I would like to bring up for things we can look forward to in the future um, that uh, could definitely shake things up. But let's start off with the EXs. Uh, we'll go into Luartha. You want to you wanna walk us through her upgrades? Yeah, absolutely. I'm actually really excited about Luartha's upgrades, and I feel like maybe that's because, like, uh, for the longest time and even today, like, I'm still 
not looking at future updates for the most part unless it's really necessary to like yeah. like the tmr like or the master ability ruins. too <laughs> yeah a little bit. master ability too very nice but um so for luartha though um i'm really excited about her x upgrades like you know how like every now and then it's like you're like huh why did you go this route for this upgrade um, but I, I never um, had that reaction looking at her stuff. So uh, jumping right into it, um, Luartha, like we all, I mean, I'm sure by now we're familiar with her, um, Fire Dual Gunner. Um, so her X upgrades, um, I, yeah, I'm just really happy with them. So like her tune-up passive, uh, like obviously tune-up we're familiar with by now. It's uh, agility up by 12% on defense pen by up to 40. Um, her X upgrade, uh, for this passive is upgraded to finely tuned uh kind of nice um but <laughs> uh agility uh stays the same at 12 percent, but defense pen goes up to 60 and her accuracy is increased uh by up to 20. um so the accuracy like uh, um like kind of tacked on there at the end um i was pleasantly surprised about that um because um you would never really look at luartha as like an accuracy unit um, so now that she has 20 more accuracy, um, I think you can start to look for her as somebody that can try to hit um, these harder hit units, especially as a range unit. You know, she generally has like higher decks, like most ranged uh, units do. Um, so yeah, uh, I have no complaints about the, this tune-up upgrade. Um, next is her quadruple shot, and uh, again. Uh, kind of out of the blue but really cool and i think uh it's because i can't really tell you know chicken or egg like is her x title because of this quadruple shot upgrade or is a quadruple shot upgrade because of her title <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it's, she's like rapid fire or something is what she's called now okay um like her title um but anyway so quadruple shot um as we all know, like dual gunner, quadruple shot, uh, job level seven skill. Um, it's like small damage or like minimum damage or something. I think it's small damage. Um, four hits, three casts, 20 AP. Uh, hers gets upgraded to medium damage. So 165 mod um, for like the same casts and the same hits and the same cost. But the damage um, is, I think, much more notable. And it's, and it's only like... Uh, I mean, in retrospect, it's 44% more mm. more of a damage mod, but it just it's, um, especially coming off the back of like guild raids and stuff like that, um, having a higher damage mod is kind of more important than you might expect, or or look at like at first glance, you know, especially like since we've started the podcast, like I've definitely learned things that I wasn't expecting, like I never like really understood about, like the whole. Like um, for the, the the differences in the damage mods having like a, a lower cap on damage than like what you would expect the damage cap to be at. You know, you're like, oh, she's, she's going to add like 24,000 or whatever, um, but she only caps at like 13,000 or something. Um, so um, that's really cool to see. Um, uh, again, a pretty nice skill. And uh, her job 25 skill is called Rapid Release. And as far as I can remember, this is the first protect and shell uh yes uh, disp dispel ability um besides like the item you know that you can't use in pvp um <laughs> so that's one of the the cool things about it just to start with um it applies even if it, the attack gets evaded um so uh, like trying to hit uh you zazan or um you know elena if she's uh you know any of these high evade units mm -hmm. um you can at least expect to get the protect and shell uh, dispelled or you know broken or whatever. Um, again, same. <laughs> weird to say, but the same damage mod as her quadruple shot upgrade. So it's a 165 medium mod. Um, it's piercing. Um, so it's it's in, it works in the same way as like you know like the lancer or like the the spear wielders where like they you know just hit all the way through the um, the tiles. But I think one of the most notable things about this and that it was it was brought up. Um, in the PvP Discord a little while ago, is that um, the the like the range of it is unique. Um, if you look at it closely, there is no like normal gunner or dual gunner like range to it. It just skips the first two tiles. Mm -hmm. So like you can shoot through your party members. 
<laughs> like like arcing over them and that's just okay. just weird and the, she's bending bullets or something <laughs> i thought you meant uh, shoot through like straight through i'm like that really makes sense for her character that she would just like shoot through her teammate to like kill somebody <laughs> else i feel like <laughs> yeah just pierce through everything just fuck it um, that's what double just, hit would just sweet yeah exactly that was the last thing i was gonna get to so um besides the fact that it's uh it's pretty cheap at 22 ap like it's cheaper than a, a jamming thrust um and you know the the multiple hits are always nice um it's three casts range height two um so it's it's weird it's a range of up to four but it's a range of three to four and literally like there's nothing lower than that but you can increase mm -hmm. that with range modifier mm -hmm. so um and i think i i haven't been able to test this yet because luartha somehow fell through the cracks for me like normally i'm like on top of having like units that I want to upgrade, having like a thousand or a hundred thousand JP or whatever. And just like just getting into one twenty if I wanted to. <laughs> yeah. But, um I haven't been able to test if this um but I would expect it to be that it's like the only the first two tiles are the ones that are like uh you skip over. And so like if you were to have like plus three range upgrade, it would be from range three to range, you know, six or whatever. Seven. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and, that's and what I'm curious about. Through, and I have it no would idea. pierce through all like five of those uh, tiles. So um, that's going to be interesting to see. And uh, another weird thing that I want to mention real fast is that you don't really see piercing double attacks, or I mean, like multi hits, except for like Glacella's like surefire. Actually, her surefire burst isn't multi hit. It's it's uh, like her triple like stab or whatever. I don't know why I'm blanking on it right now, um, but you don't often see multi-hit piercing abilities. Um, so, um, just a really cool way to like get multi-hits um, like on more than one unit. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty impressed. Um, just found a screenshot biased. in the PvP Discord. Um, it does just add range to it. Okay, so it adds more. So it always tiles, skips the squares. first. Always skips the first two, and then it okay. hits just from that three until your max range. Gotcha. Um, there's four slots for this person. I think it's a I think it's JB screenshot. Um, and yeah, it, uh, yeah, it's pretty sweet. And it, yeah, yeah. It, and it, it ignores your first two slots if like it's friendlies or whatever's there. It's pretty cool. So yeah, uh, I'm pretty happy with her her upgrades overall. And like uh, I was about to say, like I don't want to be biased because you know I, I am partial to fire teams, but. Um, I don't feel biased for talking about Luartha because <laughs> I haven't really used her. She's never really been a blip on my radar in terms of like my favorite units, you know. Um, I don't really enjoy her personality the same as like Victoria. Um, so the fact that she has like a compelling kit, um, even more so now, um, especially like she has Drain Force, which is always a plus. <laughs> right. I mean, she doesn't have Hazard Break, but still, like, uh, yeah, um, she's definitely uh, more worth it now. Yeah, I mean, she even has just, like, self-sacrifice in her passive, right? I mean, it's pretty insane. Um, and, like, with all of her EX upgrades, I mean, she has 59 agility after everything's said and done. Not the highest, especially for a gunner. Um, but she just a 504 attack, which isn't too bad. Um, so, it's still very squishy, though. Like, 2.7k HP after everything's said and done, which is not a lot. But she should uh, be out of range most of the time, so... Um, hopefully it's not too big of a deal. But do you have any uh, any impressions of how you would use her, like on the on like a current team, whether you know mono fire or rainbow or whatever? I mean, if I had infinite like resources and I just had the units to like make her work, I could imagine her being, especially the quad shot, like super set up into uh, what was Setcha, right? Like yeah, Setcha, it's just yeah. like the most obvious thing. Uh, we'll, we have what Christmas Moshery is pretty good too. With she has this missile sub job to go along with the chains, or uh, she's got the pierce damage. I think she has. Is she a dragoon main job? Yeah, yeah. yeah so she has the jump tricks too. So maybe there's some team versatility there. But uh, was... the the protecting shell like it is super impactful and super interesting. We finally have that. Uh, granted. Nowadays, we don't necessarily see people always using it. However, something like a, a Joom, right? This would be really good against because she can self-apply. I was going to so, say is Joom. I mean, there you don't are really some see Whispers as much as you see Jooms. Yeah. There, there's, there's very specific units that have ways to put them both on. I think Charlotte is another one that has a buff that puts them both. Yeah, sounds familiar. 
But in either case, uh, you might not always see people casting shell or casting protect, but if it ever is a like an auxiliary effect of another ability, this would be really cool. Or like if Rosa heals somebody and puts shell on him now, this can remove that and then set up for your magical teammates or something. But Yeah, I was actually about to ask you um, Pretty cool, you know. it's about Fryavia. I'm looking up her resistances right now. Uh, she seems like she would re like counter Fryavia really well uh, because of being able to dispel that kind of thing and because of her high like defense pen. Yeah, but Fryavia is unkillable and is an actual <laughs> god, so that's <laughs> not a problem. No. <laughs> just, uh, you just get a barrier break from one of the other units and then <laughs> a shell and protect. Yeah, right? You have to remove all of those threats, hits. and that's just so many, and she'll just yeah, heal. She'll just no, she's just going to proc regen on the first hit like she always does. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> get to her turn and heal up. Actually, what is her... What is Fryavia's missile resist? Five, Five. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've got ice cards for that. I don't know. No, it, yeah, it, I mean... Fryavia is not the best against physical non-slash damage, so... Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I, if, if you have any thoughts about the rest of that... Actually, there's another unit today, if you are done with her, that I feel like you also have a connection with uh, from the past, if you want to jump into Katia. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually uh, expecting you to say Elda, because he was, like, my first UR I pulled. I'm hoping uh, you talk <laughs> about Master Abilities first. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it, actually. Yeah, so uh, not to, like, take up all of the... The, the 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 talking like stage or whatever god these words are hard but yeah um uh, as far as the other x uh x units um i am less than thrilled <laughs> so i can go like i don't know if you'd like that you just rip through all. um yeah so katia and livial are the other units um that that got their X's today, and I'm actually not sure which one to start at first. Oh, so I can, can I, I can talk about Livio. I was okay, just giving cool. you Katia because so, I know you used her a lot. Yeah. So um yeah, I've been looking for a while for to make Katia like relevant as like an MR spellblade, you know? Um like I think that she can perform just as well as Dario, for instance. Um but um yeah, definitely not thrilled with her X stuff. And I'm a little confused actually. Uh so yeah, let me jump right in. Um so actually i'm not really sure like how much people really know about her Wait, does she um, really only have three passives yeah that's kind of like the <laughs> what that's the start that's the start of the whole issue um <laughs> oh my yeah so cleric main job um so um, that's super cool because you know clerics have been have long been one of the most underwhelming jobs, if not the most underwhelming job in the game since the beginning. And that's saying something because the vanilla or the visions, like start of the game, um, there's there's definitely like there's a reason why those units don't really get used and why they're getting master abilities and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, she only has three passives. Um, her first passive is Spirit Up, um, and then she gets March of the Saints from White Mage. So. Pfft, and then her spell blade, uh, sub, like she gets uh, the providence of, you know, whatever elements. So for her, providence of earth, so she gets magic res and earth res. Um, so she, that's at least like um, uh, some way of like bringing it back in terms of passives. But um, so her, one of her X upgrades is to her spirit up uh, passive. So um, for some reason, so she's, her X title or whatever is Bright Ward. And I'm just fucking confused. Like, why is this wind mr spellblade slash cleric slash white mage like getting light stuff to be fair as a cleric she does have banish as I her mean, main damaging yeah. skill to be which is light <laughs> we fail we say that a lot over here <laughs> I but do. yeah not to not to interrupt but um but yeah so like there is there is something to that like obviously she's main job cleric so we have to be attentive to that, but she shines the brightest as a spell blade. So I just kind of think of her like that. Um, but maybe that's you know like that's my fault. It's not like the game's fault. So yeah, um, I guess that's where we can say she, from a cleric she goes to a bright ward. Um, so anyways, back to the passive. Um, besides the spirit 15, she uh, now gets a dark res 15% uh, and healing power up by 20. Um, so I mean it's it's always cool seeing a passive upgrade and seeing a passive upgrade on a unit that only has three passives is, you know, like, I'll take what I can get, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, like, you're never going to use March of the Saints unless you're doing, like, PvE content or something because we just don't see that many Doom abilities used. And, like, when they are used, it's, like, 
um, you have to <laughs> you have to make sure that, that their turns like tick down as fast as possible. So um, uh, generally not as useful because uh, matches are generally um, decided during the first like few exchanges or whatever. And yeah, don't if put not, doom and stop jump. on the same opponent. It's just a yeah. waste of time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> never works. Um, so yeah, you're probably going to be using Bright Ward Ritual as well as Providence of Earth on her, like pretty much all the time. So I mean, it's it helps her, you know, elemental resistances out as well as her magic res. So um, yeah, can't really complain. Would be nice to have more passives. Wait, sorry, one more thing. Uh, we can laugh at me real quick. Back when I I got Doom with Ziza way back in the day. And then I started using steel time on the opponent that had the doom on them. It's like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna prison them till they die. I'm like, oh shit, they're never gonna die if they don't get turned. So I should, should, Honestly, should just been doing other stuff or running away or whatever. Like, I guess it's an insurance policy. But then I'm like, still in range. I could just be. <laughs> I feel like I feel like everybody kind of has to go through that experience, you know? If you're ever like messing with that kind of thing. Anyway, all right, back to the bright war. <laughs> Back to the Bray Ward. <laughs> Sounds like a like a sequel or something. Um, another so her other X upgrade is to her erase skill. Um, so I, I won't blame you guys if you if you're not really familiar with the cleric skills. Um, so erase <laughs> is her job level twelve skill, which dispels all debuffs. Um, so like um, like ability like uh, attribute breaks and stuff like that, like uh, the kind of stuff that um, that isn't like attack resistance like penetra like uh like imperils or you know elemental imperils or stuff like that um no those would those would be off too right i can never remember erase versus so erase uh, are all debuffs so de yeah, yeah, just the yeah. definition so, of a debuff is a stat down yeah um sorry it's like attack I mean, percent match percent resistance down breaks. And all of the arrows and up like uh, yeah, yeah yeah those yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. the so green up arrow, arrow the red down arrow yeah, yeah. all the red down arrows gone <laughs> it's it's weird like i remember that but it's just like erase <laughs> seems guess. like it should be more anyways be. Uh, her her upgrade erase bright ward is uh it does that um but also increases her resistance uh increases the resistance of her targets from being debuffed by 50 uh so like 50 percent chance to not get debuffed very nice. It's like the divine protection passive that you see on like I think it's like paladins or something. It could have been a hundred. <laughs> could have been a hundred. Like, just like could've throw been. her throw her a bone. Give her like a really broken erase ability. Like, come on. <laughs> could have been a contender. <laughs> uh so uh yeah, pretty cool. Uh debuff resistance is nice when you can take advantage of it. Um you you never see a race getting used. Um, so it's nice to make it more relevant, but honestly, it's just like oh, might as well just use another unit. Um, really not thrilled. Uh, I was hoping to see like a UR Akadia and have voted for her in the past for like a UR version of her. Because um, I think it would be cool to see like more interaction between Glaciella and her. Because um, she's her little sister by some other father or something. Um, anyways, uh, so her job 25 skill is uh, called Dual Veil, Dark and Earth. Um, what does which it do? Kind of interesting. <laughs> what does it do? <laughs> It, does, uh, does it does it fail you against dark and earth <laughs> i think it does so it's <laughs> it's an interesting like number it's not the 38 percent of like the resist magic from spell blades but it's close it's 35 percent resistance to earth and dark for three turns um and, and a really like it's got the burst aoe that you um that we're all familiar with with like many lb from the beginning and then like on and on from there um so it's cool to see the 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 um the burst radius i call it a burst but it's basically two two range aoe um uh three uses 26 tp so it's got that nice um like tp to ap ratio you know uh, instead of like dragoons and stuff like that where or soldiers where you know you get like 17 tp like yeah skills. um but you're not really going to be hurting on ap for katia except for the whole you know mr stats or whatever uh, all those but... banishes <laughs> <laughs> you got all the ap you need for all those banishes um to be fair uh as cleric <laughs> main job she can take advantage of the um what's the the light esper the carbuncle, carbuncle. She, can, she can use the carbuncle vision card ability that um you would generally attribute to like moshery you know um where it's like it's like a medium heal it's like a curata heal i think and then you raise the ct of the of your target something um, like that she can she can use that uh so like you can you can afford like in terms of strategy like you don't have to keep her on like white mage 
um, which is probably what you would probably try to keep her on if you were putting her into a party. Um, but you can actually have her do, um, you can get some mileage out of her spellblade um, job and like abilities and stuff and still be able to heal with like fucking like the healing mace or and or the, the carbuncle VC ability. So yeah. Um, <laughs> I haven't had much success. Like it's funny you remembered I actually used Katia. Like I've tried to make the most out of her and like do like the off meta pick or whatever. Um but yeah. Um power to you if you can make it work, basically. The only time I ever used Katia was back in the day before we had enough resources to just arbitrarily arbitrarily level everyone. I had her at level one and we did a small like it wasn't like a tournament, but I think I was streaming or you were streaming, and we did level one fights. Oh, where yeah. You could only uh, use units that were level one, no equipment, vision cards, or anything, just like their vanilla stats and stuff. And uh, Katia was one that I got to use, and she just murdered people at level one with Banish wait, because. Wait, what? The, it, yeah, it was hilarious. Everyone was like, uh, what is happening? Because she, she would just. She could. She had like a. Because you, you had nothing on the board either. So she had a cure and a banish as her like starter skills. Oh, it's coming. Back and she was just okay. wrecking everybody. It was hilarious. Um, but yeah, I have not actually used her in like real content. Um, I, the the stuff's man. cool, and like having the thirty five dark and earth resist is actually huge. Especially, yeah. I mean, I can see this being useful in PVE uh, applications, um, but not at the cost of six of my blossoms at this point. So. That's a very good point. Also, her accuracy is terrible. She does get 518 magic, though, which is pretty sizable. And 57 yeah. agility after everything said and done. Not awful, but still yeah. not amazing. Very, very supportive unit. What? Um, I was tempted you, earlier. You were like, if I had infinite resources, I was tempted to troll and be like, well, now we do. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> but yeah, no, the the blossoms is ultimately what it comes down to. Oh, for I sure. I yeah. recommend it. Different resources that for sure. Now, now watch that was glitched too. And somebody has like 500 of those or something. Woo. No. Um, all right. Livio. Uh, she has 550 magic, even higher. So. Quite a bit there. 54 agility now after everything's said and done. Doesn't look like she has... She got a little bit from her EX board. Um, Liviel is a unit that has charm resist 50 and disable resist 50. So pretty good for PvP in that case. Uh, I know Mako used her uh, in a, either at least one, if not more, class matches. So she has yeah. seen some live PvP play. Um, she's a black mage main job, which is unfortunate. But she has the arithmetician to kind of make up for in the sub job. Um... Looking at her EX upgrades, her first one is to her Black Mage passive, the magic up level one. So it still has the 30% magic uh, bonus, but also has increased chance to apply poison by 20 for self. Why would you want to uh, apply poison? Now, now you may ask yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so she can kind of combo with more than Merrier, which is kind of cool. Uh, but then how the fuck is she doing poison as a Black Mage Cleric Arithmetician? Uh, apparently bio is the method, uh, for her. So now I'm going to scroll down. So her bio is going to get an upgrade, right? Yeah, obviously. Uh, no, it didn't. Okay. More damage, so, more damage so her, or something, right? Nope. So her next upgrade is, uh, Stonega or Stonega, whichever way. I don't know. Uh, and it has a 25% chance to inflict poison. Yay. All right. We found the other source of poison in her kit now. Uh, so... It's plus 20, though, 45. It's actually a pretty high chance, um, joking aside. Uh, and it's a 15% poison, which is not the lowest we've seen. I think there is a 10 in the game. It's also not the highest, like Venera's LB. So, pretty sweet. 185 damage is pretty nice as well. Um, the range looks like it stays the same. Uh, same cast, same AP. Uh, the cast time is still pretty slow at 200, but... Um, and uh, oh she's never mind, I said I was gonna say arithmetician gets cast time, but that's a uh, scholar. Wrong 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 book <laughs> theme class. But uh well, you know. Actually, you know what that's another thing I'm gonna complain about real quick. The arithmetician has a book symbol. Like it's gonna be a book weapon, and I keep on getting tripped up. I go to equip my arithmeticians with the book because we have the scholar now, and it's not. It's the fucking like uh the st uh what are they called? Maces? Yeah. Right? The, theme game theme fuck the, it's it's a book 
with a with the thing out of it. I know, but like I've been so tripped up recently. I was looking at Barris uh, for the future. He's like a, he's a book mage, and I was like, oh sweet. I'm like that's funny. He has all three of the book sub jobs. I was like, wait a second, arithmetician is not a book sub job. It's a fucking maze. I'm so retarded. Like for like, I have to do that. All right, my elbow is on my push to talk. To um, for a moment, doing that. Um, I was thinking of like the high five thing where you're like, you make a turkey and you're like, Whoa. oh my, I'm not cutting that from the book. <laughs> <laughs> right, anyway, yeah, sorry. Way, way off topic. But anyway, that just keeps bothering me every time I notice that. But anyway, back, back on, back on track here. 45% pretty good. Um, she had, it's a 185 mod and then de it also decreases all elemental attack. Uh, wait, well. Decreases all elemental attack by 40 if the target have one or more of the following effects. Poison. So what I think this says is their elemental damage is reduced by 40, like the mod, if they are poisoned. Which is actually kind of insane. Um, that's... I'm reading that correctly, right? For two reasons. I have, I have two. Uh, uh. Okay. I'll wait, I'll wait for your thoughts. Uh, I'll just say her last ability real quick. So her her job 25 skill is Enchanting Mist. It's a TP skill. Uh, range of 3 with a little cross, but it can only go in a straight line away from her. You can't, like, do diagonal shots. It's weird. Yeah. I, weird limitation. Like, just why? But it uh, increases attack uh, and magic both by 30% for allies in the range, and also it decreases her own hate. I guess that's a cool bonus. And it is an instant cast, so... Uh, that is nice to have a buff like that on instant. So if you have to move your units around uh, out of formation, you can still hit those. But what are your thoughts on Stonega or Stonega Poison Fang? It seems uh, really cool, especially because it's a 45 mod now. So, uh, real quick, I like how her enchanting mist her, missed her job 25 skill. It's the same TP cost as Hide, like the ninja skill, and it also does the same. Like it, it decreases like the chance of being targeted by like kind of similarly um so the fact that it's like a buff as well as hiding like ninja it's kind of cool well she's um, like the ninja black mage right yeah, yeah one yeah. of them um so my thoughts on stone gut um <clears throat> the the poison fang version of stone gut because she's apparently a poison fang now um it's it's interesting to see that the chance to inflict poison is before the damage arrives so as oh, long true doesn't matter if her target evades it they can still get poisoned um so that can help if you know you have somebody like more of the merry or whatever that like requires um you to from the target to be poisoned or whatever or if you're just trying to make sure that the immortal like the, the the unit with courage gets poisoned um as long as you can apply the status uh ailments um you'll be able to like you don't have to worry about her accuracy or whatever um the other thing that i noticed is that um, similar to the um, the all elemental like imperil that like uh, for instance uh, fucking what's his name Oberon's uh, LB like it's it stacks with um, individual element imperils. Um, this decreasing all elemental attack is going to stack with any kind of decrease of like individual elements attack. So like you can really stack. Um, it's it's a, it's a way to like decrease the effectiveness of your target and that makes me honestly that makes me think it's more of a pve application maybe like later on we're going to need an earth team where like you need to stack that kind of thing and i think she can be useful for that um but i mean you know obviously hats off as usual to mako or anyone who uses livial and not just like pvp matches but a class match i mean she's like a pretty impressive mr unit um and that's almost singular, uh, singularly because of her arithmetician sub job. But um, it's cool to see that she has these other tools as well. Yeah, for sure. Still, still just weird, though. Cool unit. Uh, I like the poison synergy, and it does kind of, if we ever had costume based class matches, it'd be cool to try to theme together a team of Livial plus more the Marrier, maybe Golbez or something like this, like status -y mage team. Yeah. But uh, until then, um, I'm going to have to save my resources for sure. Uh, I actually don't even know if I have her max at the moment. I, I think I might have the shards done, but I haven't really invested any time or energy into her. Until then, join us next time on Legend of Korra. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, 
the next two things that are pre master ability are the weapons we got this week, which I don't know if this exists in JP, but the Gigantax. <laughs> uh, this thing is a gigantic X. Figured it out. Uh, it has three versions. We have Vital, Assault, and Aim. I am not going to talk about Vital, um, but the Assault version has 190 attack. It's quite a bit. Uh, the Golden Axe, though, I feel like is up there as well. What was the... Do you know what the Golden Axe is off the top of your head? Yeah, it's like 212, I think. 212. So th it's still a sizable chunk. Um, but this one is... Instead of giving us the 15 slash attack, it has slash resist penetration. So it's the... Uh, I guess, is it the, like, Spinal Blade or whatever it's called? Spine blade. blade. What's that? Spine Blade is uh, defense. Uh, engine oh, that's blade defense. Is, uh, oh, and... okay. Yeah, Engine Blade. So, the axes now have a sort of uh, equivalent to that, where the swords are getting all their options, you know, defense and all that. Now we just have to see a defense bend axe. Um, but anyway, the other version is aim, and it actually gives a sizable 18 accuracy. That's, it le that's a lot more than we typically do see on aim versions, so... I'd at least consider it, depending on the unit, but I honestly don't know enough about Axe main job units to really know if this is worth building accuracy on. If they have sure hit built into their kits, I just... Not off the top of my head am I really familiar with them. So, do you have any thoughts on this other than, obviously, like, you know, cool option to have, but well, how, I, how attractive the aim is? or I hate the name. Gigantax? <laughs> so dumb. But maybe it's uh, like Geigen tax or something. <laughs> um, I like um, the versatility. Like anytime you have like uh, a weapon that like uh, a class needs more of, like there's so many swords. This is like the second axe <laughs> that's not a TMR. Right? Yeah. So like the fact that not only is a second axe, um, but it's a slash resist penetration axe. Um, is actually a little understated and is actually useful um, because you know fucking the Vikings or Striders now with uh, Summer Kilfay um, these these axe wielding classes are struggling more and more and keeping up with the meta because of lacking stuff like this. Um, so I actually like to see it. I just wish it was named something else. But um, <laughs> yeah. Slash res pen 20 um, on top of, you know, uh, above average, um, like, attack value. Like, 190 is, like, it's weird to think of it as above average. But in terms of axes, where the only other axe, besides the TMR axe, is 212 or whatever. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's above average in, in comparison. The uh, As far as the accuracy, um, yeah, it's nice. It's, you know, it's 18 accuracy. Um, I wish it would be like 20 plus. Um, that would be more compelling to me. 20, 25, yeah. Yeah, yeah, 25. Like we've seen crit, I think, wasn't it the Osafune? Like the, the katana, yep. um, the old school katana with like a crit value of 25. And we're like, fuck, let's, let's, make, a, let's make a crit instead make of an a assault, really right? Make a really cool build, yeah. Yeah, um, as a, like an alternative um, to like the other katanas that have been. And to be out. fair, the Osafune also has an accuracy version of 22 accuracy. So you had yeah, 22 so accuracy, like, 25 crit, or 168 attack. You had like the three, all three options. Yeah. So like minus agility. Missing out on the 50, like you're taking such a hit to like the attack value. Um, it's like, come on, man. The accuracy could be a little bit higher. Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, uh, those are my thoughts. What about the customized lance? How do you feel about that wall of text on World Visions Calc? <laughs> oh, I don't even honestly. know what this thing does, dude. I can't. I can't figure out where the effects end, where they start. Oh, like, I, I think I see it, but it is. Yeah. Oh, the you stars are above the, the effect. Three. Yeah, yeah. So okay, let me highlight. All right, we got it. Obviously, <laughs> you're gonna like upgrade it to five stars because, like, why would you keep it at three stars? Hello, but like at the same time, like it's you, you're only gonna be using this on Camillo. Like, you get literally no other passive effects if you're using it on any other spear wielding class than, than Camillo. Well, so, you get the Pierce Tech 20, right? Oh, uh, well, okay, yeah. I it that. looks like it's split or divided there. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, okay. So, Pierce Attack 20, Um. it's a UR spear, Um. so that's cool. But, like, you like why not just use the Wind Spear? I guess if people didn't farm the box event, then yeah, they don't yeah, have so, it. So, like, yeah. 172 attack with the 20 pierce is not bad for, like, a, just a yeah. generic pierce unit. I actually, um, 
I didn't yeah. even I didn't even scroll all the way down on what of Dash Cal for this. I was like, uh, I would have <laughs> expected to see the Pierce twenty above the bestowed like limitation there, like I'm used to with vision cards. Um, but uh, yeah, cool. So um, I was wrong. Uh, Pierce attack twenty. It's nice if you don't have a wind spear. So I mean, there's that, and the, you know the attack is one seventy two. It's nice. It's actually one of the highest, if not the highest, um, spear attack value. Yep. So there's that. And you know, twelve accuracy. Um, that it's okay to have that lower accuracy as long as it's something when you have this other stuff to make up for it. Um, instead of having like an aim weapon that's like specifically I'm building towards aim and then getting something average or a little above right. average or just shitty. So yeah, uh, I like the look. Uh, what about you? Uh yeah, let me open image a new tab to get a nice zoomed in. Oh, it did. what? It didn't zoom in at all. All right, never mind. Uh, <laughs> normally it like zooms in on whatever the pictures are. Not even close. Um, I don't know if you're passing it over to me to just give general thoughts, but we haven't even said what it does yet. Uh, for Camillo. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean like, light attack fifteen, spirit fifteen, and spirit defense. Or sorry, spirit debuff resistance one hundred. So uh, it, it builds onto his uh sort of little sub magic tank theme, and with I the like spirit that. debuff resistance, pretty good. You can still penetrate his spirit, but you can't reduce his spirit shut the fuck up <laughs> uh but for him it's a overall uh 35 mod um wow, for his God. pierce attacks which is pretty cool so i'm sorry today has just got me in this weird weird ass mood <laughs> and i'm sure it's coming through for anyone watching right now so all these jokes and stuff but uh but yeah i actually like how you like kind of slipped up or whatever you called it spirit defense um that's a cool like i know you didn't mean it but like it's a cool way of looking at debuff resistance as like defense you're defending your spirit from being broken i can see that bolstering his spirit <laughs> unbreakable spirit <laughs> he's like this little like slimy womanizer dude <laughs> like this oh, God. bridge four uh, um yeah anyway Let's move on to talking a little bit about Master Ability 2s. So these are going to be hopefully a little easier for us to catch up on each week. And when they, as they do release, it's just one page, just a couple lines. Um, and we'll mostly just try to say, you know, just how how much, if we had a tier, right? So say I take Stern Leonis, who I'm looking at right now. Do these effects bump him up to where I'd more likely to use him? Or what, like, what are the thoughts generally just based on that? Um, I don't know if they always have EXs at the point where they get mastery abilities, but it seems like we're going to have most things EX by the time we get, like right now we have most units EX, I feel like. So I'm glad you mentioned that. I don't um, know if before, that'll ever overlap or not. Before we get into it, like, I'm glad you mentioned that because I, I looked back at the X release schedule and they're pretty much trying to follow it as closely as possible. So like, oh really? Okay. these were like the first, like, um, ones to receive like X upgrades, um, uh, and uh, that's like obviously taken into account like they ha they still have to keep a release uh like a unit release schedule like at the same time so like you're not gonna see king mons get a mat like a second mastery ability uh they're, they're giving it to like the vanilla characters <laughs> yeah um so like when i say as closely as possible that's what i'm referring to so um it, it, it's cool to see that like you can pretty much expect the units that got X upgrades from the beginning and, you know, uh, and then following along. Um, so I don't think we're going to expect to see any second mastery abilities on non X units is ba basically what I'm saying. And initial looks at these based on the ones I've seen from JP, where I've looked ahead a little bit at some units I'm excited about, as well as the first four we have, which are going to be Mont Leonis, Stern Leonis, uh, Elda Leonis and Rob Horn. Um, the MR units get a lot, like a lot, a lot. And they also, so far, I haven't seen an exception. So if there is one, feel free to blast me in the comments, but I haven't seen one yet uh, that does not have a resistance for elemental ally. So it seems like we're getting, they're using the Master Ability 2s as a way to update older units to getting these elemental um, passives. Like if you look at uh, Elda, he gets increased HP 10% and fire attack 15 for fire allies. So it's kind of like, it, it's sort of like the defense pen upgrades we've been getting on a lot of units. Like, oh, we're, we're modernizing these units. They're also modernizing the elemental synergies. Uh, however, all the MR units also are getting these increase insert status resistance here 
25% for elemental ally. So we have Mont Leonis as the first unit here. Um, his All of his buffs um, kind of side by side are... And actually, real quick, before I read these, are the Master Ability 1 abilities duplicated in the text of the Master Ability 2? Because it looks like that's the case. It is, yeah. Okay. So... There's, a, there's actually, I'm sorry, um, to make a further distinction there, uh, it doesn't list a second master ability. It's just one master ability. So, so it's it's weird. Like, there's two quests. It's just, it's like when you complete the quest, it says, strength further enhanced. Okay. So uh, his original master ability was defense 15 and jump 1, uh, but now he has an additional increased HP by 10% for Earth allies. And then... For all you PvPers out here, happy to see this. Increased Disable Resistance 25% for Earth Allies. That's pretty sweet. Now, it doesn't work for mixed teams as well, except on himself. But that's a that's a pretty sweet status uh, buff to have. Or status resistance, sorry. Um, and then for his other two, real quick, before we talk about it. Uh, increased Pierce Resist 25 for self. Um, and also, he has Natural 5 Hate. So... Uh, Pierce is one of his negative resists uh, in his base kit, and now it's uh, plus 20, which is pretty insane. So, um, What were you about to say? <laughs> what was I about to say? Oh, yeah. Um, the way that it's worded in-game, um, I was unaware that it was a party effect, the, the disabled resistance. Mm -hmm. it, it looked like, like it was at the end of like the, the Earth, like the allies. It looked like it was just for him. And so now I'm like, whoa, that yeah. is huge. Uh, all the MR units have one of these. Yeah, that's crazy. I'm going to talk about one in a, little, in a little bit for like looking forward, kind of teasing some of the future stuff. It it gets kind of nuts with these units. Is it, get. Is it Curry? It is Curry. <laughs> <laughs> it. That's, that's Curry like, that's like Curry's buff is six months so away insane. or something, though. Fuck that! I'm talking about today. I'm too excited, <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna give examples of like what could be coming, and also some flops. To be fair. So. It's actually impressive because like Curry, Curry was one of the the later units in like the first like batch in the sense of like the first six months or whatever of like mm -hmm. the X upgrades. Um, but they actually bumped him up to like the like the sixth like batch of units. So that was uh, surprising for me to see. Um, any thoughts about his upgrades overall? Um, see, these are kind of quick, but uh, but thinking about how we use Mott now or at, for some of these units, maybe we don't use. Um, and seeing how these will impact that. I, I think it helps because like we've been getting more Pierce units. So just like giving him Pierce just to just have more natural tankiness is cool. The HP to update with allies is awesome. The disable resist. If you're using mono teams is super relevant, but um, I think it, it's nothing in insane. It makes them more relevant against the uh, winter Luartha like wind team. Um, okay. That's the first thing I think of about like his increased Pierce resist. Like he's got a, it used to be five, like a negative five percent. Now it's like positive twenty, right? Um, if I if I'm not mistaken, um, so I mean that's just cool. Like the and like the, you know the niche niche situation of uh, you know going up against not just a Pierce attacker, but like probably somebody that would have kicked his ass back in the day. Um, obviously they weren't around back in the day, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, back in their day, now. Back in my day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly i am really impressed um with probably almost all of these um mastery upgrades can we call them mastery upgrades second uh, masteries it's not a second mastery, i hate master ability too but yeah, yeah master ability upgrades um yeah i'm impressed with all of them but i think oh man uh months is definitely up there um uh, more HP, the disable, the disable res, which you know apparently all all the MR upgrades get. Uh, the you know the the status res uh, for the the earth or for the element team, um, that's crazy in itself. Like you always like disable resistance is one of those just like stop where like you always have to worry about that, especially with high faith units that might be evade units that you want to have high faith on to apply certain effects. <laughs> so, um, so <laughs> the fact that he also gets like the, the the passive hate, um, and doesn't even have to worry about it being on a passive like Dwayne or whatever, um, Mont like Prince Mont, uh, for lack of a better way of saying it, um, he's still one of the top MRs, and I think that's really cool because he's like the original like main character like 
go-to unit you know like mm -hmm. you have for free you build him because of his mr or his his tmr um and then like you uh i still remember i have fond memories of using him and engelbert and you know x for like the third unit on like a guild battle team and like you just win because you you, you have a wall basically um so <laughs> Oh god, um, but uh, so it's it's always cool seeing like tanks especially getting upgrades um, or or attention at all. Um, I I just remember being like, dude, where the fuck is Mont's like hate generation besides Taunting Blade? Uh, just like Engelbert, you know, Engelbert got his his uh, his courage um, upgrade, and seeing Mont get that that um, like master ability like hate upgrade is really cool too. So yeah, um, pretty awesome. Yeah, you want to talk about your boy? Your boy. Or your, or your man, whichever way you want to put it. <laughs> um, so I didn't want to jump straight to Elda or King Elda because uh, like, I didn't want to structure them in terms of like a highest to lowest, like a fucking tier list, because I hate tier lists. Well, that's not what um, I was doing, but if it... I mean, yeah, so, all right, but, fine, I'll talk about Rob real quick then. All right, we're going to Rob. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so and Rob... No, this is the best one. His, uh, his old master ability was 10 crit rate and 5 evasion. Meh. Uh, and now those are upgraded to the same crit rate, but 15 evasion. Uh, and he also now has the light passive, so the 10% HP for ally, the 15 light attack for al light allies. Pretty cool. Um, and then also increases defense penetration by 20 for self. It's just like kind of adding a... That's not, I wouldn't say that's a passive because a passive is typically 40, but it is like a, a buff he might give himself uh, via other means. So he just has that built in now, which is pretty cool. Um, and giving him... Excuse me, the uh, 15 evasion really leans into his um, EX upgrade and the way his stats have lined up to actually be a real evade unit. So I think giving him the light attack and HP also helps to sort of maybe put him on one of those teams with El Elena. Like maybe if there's a world in which uh, Jaden and Elena aren't the duo anymore and you want like Yuna, Rob Horn, and Elena to have the Elena, Elena, I say it both ways. Um, to be the evade team of choice, you can have a mix of physical damage and magic damage as well as these crazy slash chains that they'd be producing together. So maybe that's an opportunity we can go in the future and you're not losing out on the uh, elemental passive anymore. I'm going to mention real fast that um, uh, I know long time in particular was using uh, a light evade team um, in his pickup matches that in included like King Rob. Uh, I faced he, a few too, yeah. Yeah, where it's like a little underrated like how much he can evade so having 10 more evade is actually pretty cool like i think just um just estimating without any buffs or anything he's sitting at like 60 evade it was like 57 or something like that with like no esperon um just like you know party vc buffs or whatever um no like ribbon he has to use a ribbon because he can't use like the you know, Sage's hat or even the Santa clothes, which is unfortunate, uh, winter mm -hmm. clothes, whatever. Um, but still, yeah, so with this, like, he can reach 100 plus evade, which is nice. That's kind of like what you're shooting for. It's cool to see. Um, I would rate Rob at the number three master ability uh, upgrade. I'm curious who you think is the worst, then. Apparently, you think Mont is the worst of the four? No, Stern. Mont is number two. Well, I'm about to read Stern's, and I don't know. Yeah, go for it. I guess maybe he's just probably the worst unit of the three. He 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 holds <sighs> Keenblade. That's what he does. He holds the Keenblade. He holds the flashlight while everyone else does the work. Uh, so his master ability used to be just crit damage twenty five. Uh, it, it he still has that. Uh, also gets the dark passive. For I think from now on, not that everyone's gonna watch this part of the episode and like remember forever, but we're just gonna say the elemental passives. Yeah. And if the percentages change, we'll we'll mention it. But he gets the dark passive or the dark party passive. If you have uh, any confusion whatsoever about that, I don't I don't know what to say. Yeah. Uh, and then he also gets additional, just as Rob did, the twenty percent or the twenty defense pen, and then he gets his own AOE resistance by ten for self. I, I guess maybe this is the worst one. The defense pen AOE resist is really nice though. I, I do like those. Like I like it's like an AOE. AOE resist and not like a magic resist or slash resist or something. Um, but I guess maybe you don't want to be getting your stern hit anyway. So maybe, maybe the it's just not enough these days. It's probably that's the case. Exactly, that's exactly it. Like, uh, 
I mean, I, I, thematically, it's cool. Like his team art, especially, is like focused on increasing AOE, like resistance. True. You know, um, and it's cool that it, that that exists. Like it helps um, get units like Cloud or King Mont, who have like these high AOE resists, like over the edge, up to like a hundred or whatever. Um, but yeah, he's just so squishy, man. Um, actually, the the days of Snacko, like using like a <laughs> a like bulky stern bruiser build are like long gone in my opinion like For sure. the fact that like back then there weren't any barrier breaks and not a lot of people had barriers so um <laughs> yo if you had a mastery uh, tmr back then you were unstoppable yo, yeah exactly <laughs> you can win tournaments with that shit um but in my opinion it's the worst because despite having that extra defense pen which is nice like uh Otherwise, he'd just have to use like his hazard spirit, um, his his ex uh, hazard form, uh, to get some defense pen. Um, like he doesn't have a defense pen like passive, uh, so like the defense pen part is nice, but like, just I I feel like the AOE is just like meh. That's why it's the worst in my opinion, because I mean he's still gonna die from an AOE. Man. versus like a single attack hit so um yeah i mean it, it's cool to see him get like the damage buff and the hp buff um and and all that but um yeah the aoe resist is kind of useless on him all right let's talk about uh elda all right right on so um so elda's uh mastery upgrade uh his original is hp uh 10 and increased attack by 20 percent um so his upgrade um, has the 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 fire party buff, ten uh, percent HP and fire attack, fifteen. Um, his own HP goes from ten percent uh, to twenty five percent buffed, and his attack also increases from twenty to thirty. This is something that I would have liked to see on Stern. There's one more thing, uh, and that's his upgrade of his LB. But in terms of like these stat increases, these uh, these these buffs, um, this is what I would have wanted to see on Stern for him to, for it not to be like the worst of the bunch if I had to choose a worst, you know? I mean, like, any upgrade is a good upgrade, right? Yeah. Maybe. Kinda. Yeah, except for a couple I'll say in a little bit, but yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, like, more attack, more HP, uh, the party buff, which is kind of essential nowadays, um, like, really uh, could not have gotten any better except, like, improving his LB. And uh, the, the LB upgrade, uh, like, his LB is called Leonis Barrier, um, it's probably the best part about his mastery upgrade, his master ability upgrade. And that's saying something because like the, his mastery upgrades like across the board are awesome. Um, so for those of you guys not familiar with King Elda's, uh, LB, um, it's, uh, it basically, it's, it acts like, um, Gilgamesh's armor of discontinuity. It just reduces damage taken by up to 50%, um, for like for three hits. Um, but on top of that, and, and that, obviously it's a difference between an LB and just a skill that you can keep using. Um, it increases the chance that Elda gets targeted by up to six. Uh, it increases his hate by six. Um, so very uh, the the worst part about his LB and the worst part that has always been about his LB is that it's forty three AP to use, and it should have been a TP cost from the beginning. You all right? No, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I thought you were like... No, I was I was hearing out. I was making sure my sound was good. Gotcha. Um, so the upgrade uh, still has the same effect. Uh, and reduces damage taken by up to 50% for, for three hits. Uh, increases the, his hate. Um, the upgrade gives him two casts of it and makes it 43 TP like it should have always been. So, um, A TP LB is pretty insane. Yeah. And the fact that it's two cat or like you have two casts of it, um, it's like it's like an awesome TMR that like you don't. It's like one of the selection quest units or whatever with like a like a baller TMR. Like yeah, you don't have an LB, but it's still <laughs> yeah. like you're still a good unit sometimes. You know, um, this is what that kind of reminds me of. Um, the fact that it's forty three TP with two casts, like. Lancers already don't really struggle with in terms of building AP. Like they start, I think, with like twenty five percent or something like that. They don't start with like the ten or fifteen percent that like you normally start really? with, where like you only have like <laughs> um, 
like one skill that you can use or whatever before you're like shit i got i'm out of gas i gotta build ap um same with rob i feel like rob is another one like he's he's main samurai but like i think i don't know if it's because he has like sub lancer or something but i feel like he's also one of those that has like a higher initial ap i could be wrong and i maybe just be conflating like elda and, and rob but yeah so elda has always started with like i think it was like 30 or 40 ap or something um, which has always been like really cool because um you can like it's like at least one more turn where you can be like uh like doing like a blitz on your opponent or something if you're actually using elda against an opponent um so um the reason why this upgrade is like in my opinion the best of the four um, isn't because I enjoy using Elda and he's like, you know, the, the nostalgia factor or whatever. It's the fact that his HP reaches like 9k plus, like in the realm of like King Mont and Rain. Um, and his attack is is like up there with like Stearns and Seymour's. I don't know why I'm talking about Seymour as an MR, but like Seymour's an MR, like he he was he had an, a surprising amount of attack. It was like 1500 or something with that that vision card. Um, yeah, something about apples or something. No, 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 that was the, <laughs> that was a, a Durando or something. Um, but yeah, the the Seymour slash um, O like vision card had like a bestowed 50% attack for him or O or something. So and he's already got um, 548 too. I'm looking at the index. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Seymour's so massive. Um, the fact that he, this basically turns Elda into a better bruiser than he's ever been, and uh, it's actually can be a compelling pick on your fire PvP team, um, especially because you know you look at Elda on, on an opponent's team and you're like, okay, easy win. Like it's it's not like a meta unit, um, but like if you think that and you go into it he's and like terrifying like yeah so i mean he's always been like it's kind of been like the eileen threat where like if you let her do damage to you before you kill her you're gonna regret it yeah you um, don't so fact, let an elda or an eileen yeah. touch you <laughs> you remember i don't know i don't remember so, if it was against you but like i used like a uh, his uh god what's it called his uh his emanate his uh fucking what's it called earth and glory yeah it, um, it was me. And just like obliterated like all three of your team. <laughs> I was just, like, huh, well, I guess I'll just take one hit from him. Oh, <laughs> you, I yep. only take one hit. Yep. yep. That's, <laughs> uh, I don't even remember what you were using, but I was like, yes, this was so worth it. I had an Eileen do that to me as well. They got, it was against yeah. Vinny. I got double quickened in a tournament. I didn't respect it. I saw just, that, yeah. Like, boom. Dead. I think it was on the castle exterior. But, uh, yeah. Any other so, any other gushing about Elda? Gushing. <laughs> um, the fact that uh, he's so much like more terrifying as a bruiser on top of his X upgrades. Um, I think uh, I think he could have been a contender. I don't want to keep saying that, but like the whole contender thing, like it's really about how competitive a unit can be in the current meta. And honestly, I would not be surprised to see Elda's like being used in arena. Or you know even like free match, um, so I'm definitely looking forward to trying him out personally. The the one thing I had a problem with, uh, and this is just kind of a side note, is that all right. So before the maintenance happened, I had the chance to get the the mastery upgrade, the master ability upgrades on all these guys, um, which is why I was starting to formulate like uh, which ones were my favorite, or like mm -hmm. I, I like the most. Uh, Elda's LB upgrade didn't take effect and i even restarted the game and i looked at it and it still said one cast 43 ap i was like dude what the fuck i have this mastery ability like i don't have to turn it on or anything um mm -hmm. so i don't know if that's a bug that they have yet to fix um i'm sure that's what the cause of the maintenance is right now that we're waiting on right then we'll log back in and get more uh, light stuff yeah yeah they're fixing yeah. elda's uh, lb that's what it is 100 um but I, I haven't had the chance to play around with him because the, the LB was still, quote unquote, broke. So, um, yeah, looking forward to reporting back uh, in the near future about um, how much more I'm enjoying him. Uh, so do you have any examples of future units that you've heard about that kind of excite you, like things to look forward to? I have a couple here, uh, of course, just ice units because I'm familiar enough with them to talk about. But 
um, and Mish, of course, because Mish got his in JP as well. Um, but if there's any units you either would want to look at, or do you have any in mind that you want to bring up, or do you want to think about it while I talk about these? So the the ones that immediately come to mind are the Final Fantasy 14 units. Um, okay, those... so like Thancred and Ishtol. Yeah, so those just like you know these four units we just talked about like they're literally from the beginning of the game and they've been needing some love for a long time especially ishtola but you know thank is still like a fan favorite in some circles um so the fact that they're coming during the second anniversary from what we can expect um i'm really looking forward to seeing not just the mastery upgrade the master ability upgrades but like the getting them getting their x's and stuff like i'm actually looking forward to using ishtola on a fire team i mean i don't i don't know if that sounds crazy to you because we're all familiar with how squishy she is um uh, but yeah she has like uh, she's definitely like competitive afterwards yeah she gets the fire passive which is sweet although yeah. i will say when i say the fire passive i guess we can't necessarily say that because the MR units get the HP part, but instead of getting the fu- the elemental attack, they get a resistance for elemental allies. So yeah, I did see that with Mont. So hers is confusion resist twenty five for fire allies, um, and then in addition to her normal TP fifteen percent, acquired AP thirty, and magic resist pen thirty, she gets uh, an additional uh, like twenty percent magic. She gets twenty. She gets twenty spirit pen on top of all that. Pretty uh pretty good yeah like i it's like I was penetrates all her. forms of resistances yeah i was looking at her recently i i think uh i don't know, remember if i was talking about it like on a recent podcast but uh, maybe it was like in a private message or i think something. we talked but about it before can, the podcast yeah. she can get like a hundred percent magic res pen on top of her spirit pen that she gets so yeah it's just like i'm looking forward to seeing how well she does because i don't know if you remember but like when we were still learning about the game and like during the first weeks or whatever like her Xeno Glossy did a lot of damage. <laughs> yeah. So, like, bringing that back is something I'm looking forward to doing. If not just, like, the foul, like, multi clears, like the forest Cholo's using foul. For sure. Uh, so, um, yeah. So, those are the ones that kind of been, like, were the ones that immediately came to my attention. But um, obviously, you know, I'm looking forward to Ziza next week if it's, like, once a week um the, these kind of batches i can only assume that it's once a week because the second anniversary is coming up next month and it's the fourth batch so like it's got to be once a week right uh that would be math yeah <laughs> so like aziz is coming next week uh zazan's the the week after with oh and Mediana and Balo as well um so i mean eileen is, is also getting hers next week as well as oldo and layart layart yeah layart um so yeah, it's uh, just really cool that we're, you know what a what a what a day to be alive. Um, <laughs> we're finally getting these master ability upgrades, uh, but I don't really have any others that kind of stand out to me. Like uh, this is one of those um, situations where I'm like, I don't really need to look ahead. Right, I'll we'll take them as they come it. for the most yeah. part. I was just gonna tease a few that I'm excited about yeah, slash like just interesting. So like Nasha, so her master ability is just 25 percent HP currently. Like it's just. She gets a bunch of HP. Mine has right. over 10,000 without really trying that hard. She she got a lot of health. But uh, in addition to that, she gets uh, 10 defense. She gets natural 5 hate. She gets the HP for ice ally. And then she also gives all ice allies berserk 25 resist. Oh, jeez. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, help oh, help fight against the fire menace. It's, uh, like, <laughs> it's like fucking Ishtola getting confused resists for Agrius's LB. Yeah, there you go. Uh, we'll save Curry for last. Mish, um, it looks like the rare units don't get the elemental passives. So, Mish is still kind of a little down there, but he gets a flat 10 agility, which is pretty cool. Um, it's not 10%, which would be a lot worse on a unit with lower agility like he has. So, like a flat 10 is pretty sweet. Um, but his normal passive, or master ability, he has this weird, like, plant killer 50 PvE skill. But he has 750 activation time, which is kind of like his claim to fame. He insta cast everything when you put his focus passive on but now he has 800 cast time so you don't need to put the focus passive on for all of his yeah. stuff to be instant yeah so now we can go back to running his magic up passive which is something that i haven't been able to run in a while because i i have thief floor because agility move you just have to 
Um, and then the focus was just to make everything instant. So it's a no-brainer to go back to the magic passive. So now he's going to do yeah. a lot more damage and still have all the instant casts. Because nothing of his is less than 200 cast time when it's maxed. So that's Dude, pretty sweet. What are the odds that you're going to take a lower rarity character like that and make what makes them awesome even better? That's right? actually kind of exciting. And then Curry. So Curry is one that came to my attention recently. That's the whole, like, I, it got me excited for these Master Ability 2s. I didn't realize how impactful they were. I remember seeing Thancred gets, like, a bunch of attack. He gets, like, an, his blasting zone's, like, instant now. And there's some cool stuff. But I was like, yeah, you know, it, it doesn't, like, I, I still like Thancred even before that. And to be fair, I also like Curry. It's, he's His EX did a lot for him. But now... <laughs> uh, Dude, I don't even want to know. It's probably going to be something like... <laughs> um instant kill in a burst aoe from like oh it's even strange. better um so he has increased hp 15 is like his normal thing for self he's got acquired ap 30 for self and initial ap 10 for self that's actually already a lot for a master ability on an mr uh he gets the hp 10 percent for ice ally i'm gonna i'm gonna skip something uh then he gets increase a chance to apply frostbite for self by 25 So his Frost Mob Barrage now has a base 50% chance of applying Frostbite. Why? Um, he doesn't need an LB. There's two more. Okay. He has literally seven lines of text on his Master Ability now. <laughs> oh my god. Increase range two. Wait, what? Really? Increase range two. Holy shit. Just on his passive. So now with concentration, it's increase range four. And then I think he also has the, uh, Wait. he has range one. Oh, he doesn't have concentration. I'm sorry. Yeah, but he no. has, uh, the range one on his other passive. So he's got range three. He basically has concentration on his master ability. Yeah. yeah. Without wow. the downside. And then his status resist for ice allies is charm. What? Oh my God, dude. Fucking curry. I hate that guy. Charm resist 25 additional chance to frostbite for self and range two. Good like, Lord. it's the it's the craziest combination of things. Like you have a base fifty frostbite from like across the map now, and oh by the way, if you bring your charm units here, like a lot of ice units already have decent charm resist, but like yeah, now it's just good luck built right? in like twenty five. Yeah, it, it makes ch steel heart a fair skill now. <laughs> yeah, a fair skill. <laughs> well, it's like suddenly now in it's not comparison. just the the win teams that have you know like the are using the chocobo vc mm -hmm. for like the, the charm resist like it's not just them that has like an innate advantage over charm teams that's crazy man so how often are you expecting to see curry get used on ice teams no idea if i expect like quote unquote normies but i imagine pvp will see it a lot more like yeah. uh, class matches and stuff like that's those are significant i mean he can but he can frost my barrage on the first turn wait he, he has so, no fap so you, he yeah. can just walk up and across the map frost my u-turn one like with a um, crazy high base chance. It seems to me that the only drawback here is that it's mono element. You said like because he's an MR, it's for ice allies, right? The charm resist is yeah. only for ice allies, yep. Yeah, so that makes it not completely broken, just like obviously the right. MRs. Um so it has to be for a mono element. Or it could just be like if you're using Kim. Um I don't know, you don't really run Curry as like a Faith ninety seven or seventy unit, right? He's just at fifty or less. Uh, he'll be 97 oh, now. Frostbite, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I mean, yeah, that that helps. Like he can be on a rainbow team and still be effective and not really have to worry as much about range charm. two and frostbite up. It's so insane. Yeah, that's crazy. And and like we didn't mention it with uh with Livial, but I as far as I know, and I tried to confirm this on the the server, the PvP server a little bit ago, um, because I never expected to forget it. But these increased chances to apply status effects are outside of the faith equation. They're, they're, um, so, aren't they? No, don't they apply to the base? No, it's out. It's outside of it. So hmm. if you have like a 25% resistance to frostbite, it's not immunity like some fucking bosses or whatever, but like you still have a chance to be frostbitten by a curry as far if I'm remembering that correctly. And, and, and we... There, people mm. responded by saying that that's correct. And I can't believe it. Who's the people? It's, it's like uh, Zenith, I think. And I think JB said something about it too. Um, uh, so like, incredible people. 
Um, I, as far as I remember, I'm have to look that up. I I'm I don't sure. have Mustadio, but I swear we did tests and back in the day, and I was like, I need to remember this, and then I forgot it because I don't have. I I never had the like Mustadio like the increased chance to apply. Well, whenever, whenever it's decreased chance, I mean, the re resistances work where they sub you subtract the resistance from the chance, and then you multiply by faith. So, I don't know why the inverse would work any different. Right. Um, but I guess I don't know for a fact right now, so I guess I can't really argue, but uh, right. I, I definitely, we're going to have to look into that. Um, I always forget to, I, I'm not going to commit to putting a pinned post or anything, because I always forget, right. but yeah. uh, it's just, TP uh, Discord and find out, look for the conversation. Hey, conversation. <laughs> yeah, so, like, as far as uh, my understanding of it is, it's it's just, a, like, a flat increase. It doesn't so, have anything is to do that how more the Marrier's Poison mind. work, then? I think so, yeah. So it's just whatever the chance is plus twenty, not so, yeah. plus twenty the base chance. Yeah, I think uh, that's how it works. It's, mm, so that's yeah, weird. obviously we're gonna have to do some testing. Um, if you guys have are like obviously you're watching right now, so if you guys have already done said testing and uh, have, see uh, an opportunity to uh, like kind of like you know grind our noses a bit, that's not the right phrase, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Feel free to chime in. <laughs> Oh uh, inquiring minds will definitely want to know like if we are struggling to remember like it obviously needs to be addressed so yeah uh, don't be afraid to uh, say something absolutely uh i have a lot more i could talk about but i'm not gonna so let's just uh Fucking curry. We'll, we'll, we'll get them as they release and uh you know we'll we'll all be excited together but uh I Those look forward to seeing what next week brings. Uh, good luck on anybody's pulls if you are doing them for the summer units. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't have... It's funny because the two I kind of were... I was interested in... I mean, I guess Summer Catone too, but um, were, I, I really... I like Summer Lilith a lot, and I also like the the Water Elsorel. And they're the ones that are on the thing where you can like, oh, guaranteed get one to level 99. And I'm like, oh, kind of tempting, but I don't know if I, I don't know if I feel like spending that right now. But uh, th those are decently attractive deals. Yeah, right. Nah, they're probably not going. To. I got I got other stuff right now. But yeah, any last thoughts? Um, yeah, just I mean, stay tuned for more mastery ability upgrades every week. So, uh, like like we said earlier, like Eileen, Ziza, Old Doa, and one other. Why am I blanking? I think we're looking forward to those next week. So, and uh, unfortunately, no class match this last week. Um, Really sad, but um, we're looking forward to it next month. So uh, hopefully, we'll have a chance to talk about that more in the. Please look forward to it. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, Layart, that's who it was. Yeah. Oh, wait, Layart's next week. Yep. Oh, you like hers? I'll tell you after we end the episode. But... Nice. I had right, her up guys. actually. <laughs> All right. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next week. I've been Zach Bro. I've been Danaboo, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>